fish you might look for a fisherman with his rod and reel. Yet right here in the midst of the great American desert is one more place where the bass really proves itself as the nation's number one freshwater game fish. Waiting on the sidelines is Jason Lucas, ex-cowboy, former professional lion and bear hunter, the English-born angling expert is now an editor of Sports of Field magazine. He probably knows more about the habits of bass and bass fishermen than anyone in the world. With him is Johnny Good, an eastern friend he's tempted and inveigled into hopping on an airliner whose speed makes these nearby desert lakes a weekend excursion instead of a week-long trek. Skipping the delights and thrills of Las Vegas, where other games of chance hold sway, Lucas and Johnny hurry across 50 miles of bone-dry Nevada desert with a true angler's impatience to try their luck and wet a line on Lake Mojave. As in all sports, there's a difference of opinion among fishermen about equipment. Johnny Good is going to use the newest idea in rods, hollow glass, and he puts on a spinning reel, a light line device that's old in Europe but catching on fast over here. Lucas, meanwhile, gets a few casting lures with an easy reach, about 500. Jason puts together a casting rod of split bamboo, but with a new wrinkle. It's impregnated with Bakelite plastic for added strength and action. He uses an old fisherman's trick to lubricate the ferrules for an easy fit. And now they're off, into a bass fisherman's wonderland. Lake Mojave is an offspring of Hoover Dam and the Colorado River. Above Hoover Dam is huge Lake Mead. Below it is Mojave, hemmed in by cliffs carved by the Colorado. It is full of deep coves and inlets, which once were box canyons known only to wandering Indians and vanished prospectors with their burrows. It is all a part of the Lake Mead Recreational Area, administered by the National Park Service. An osprey or fish hawk leads the anglers on. Each turn of the boat's course leads into hidden getaways, where, whether or not a visitor wants the excitement of a fighting fish on the end of a line, he can sit amid nature's solitude and grandeur. only a second or two to get an impatient line in the water for it's spring and the fish are close to the surface. Johnny Good ties on a spinning lure that looks exactly like nothing good to eat even for a fish. The quarter ounce lure pulls the light line off the reel as a dressmaker might pull a length of thread from a spool. On the retrieve the four pound line is picked up by a mechanical finger and rewound on the stationary spool. uses a plug and more conventional casting reel. His casting form has been perfected by years of almost daily fishing. This is a wobbling lure, and to the uninitiated it resembles absolutely nothing. This of course is an imitation frog. By reeling it in and fits and starts, Jason makes it look even more so. Here's a flatfish. Although there is no such animal, a zoological fact unknown to the bass who love it. And for use right on the surface, there's the popper. However, that's enough school. It's time for fun, says Mr. Largemouth Bass. And Jason sets the hook with a jiggle, not a jolt. A good three-pounder. into the net with proper form, tail down. Here goes for a little spinning, thread line angling as it's called in Europe. John Good has come a long way for this, and it looks as though he has one sulking on that tight line. And here's one that will almost pay for the trip. Jason palms his free spool tournament casting reel, controlling
controlling backlash and tension strictly with his thumb, a method used only by experts. This jab is legal, but small, so Jason takes it gently by the lower jaw, removes the hook, and sends him, or her, off to grow up and get an education. feet in some places, but there is some shallow water fishing to be had. Johnny has one that has been lingering near the ledge. To many bass fishermen, the fly rod provides the best sport. Lucas, using an impregnated bamboo trout rod, is working a popping bug, a tiny, almost weightless lure that remotely resembles a water insect. A bass snatches it on the surface and Jason plays him. There's little time to reel, so he strips the line in by hand. And here he is. But it's getting time to go. It's hard for any fisherman, novice or expert, to leave when the fish are biting. And around Lake Mojave, the bass just don't want to let Johnny leave. to the towering skyscrapers of the city and one last look at the towering canyons of this magnificent desert country as the boat speeds on the homeward journey. You can take the scenery with you, but here is something that you can freeze up and take home on the plane to talk to your friends and family with. Jason's mighty well pleased too, as he takes time off from his tough eight-hour daily job of taming game fish to say goodbye to his newest convert to the growing tribe of desert anglers.